I'm Karen Bonfili. And I'm Andreas Hessing. Um, welcome to our home and garden in Altadena, California. You can see behind us our beautiful San Gabriels. We're nestled in the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains. So when we first got here in 99, the place was a mess and there were huge palm trees right here with ivy growing up them 30 feet and a big dead pepper tree at the front yard covered with ivy. In 2003, we stripped the whole space out. We solarized, we put in our utilities and in 2004, we started building a garden. We did a, a full plan drawing. Oh, um, yeah. We did a full design. So we wanted to start with a, a clean slate and we um, spent a lot of time walking and sitting to create this like pedestrian friendly design. We both have backgrounds in visual arts and have experience building out um, art installations, which um, really deals with site specific um, aesthetics. And so we apply that to this garden. So we wanted um, to create a, an experience uh, of walking through the garden. So you start up at the top of the street with a pedestrian gate, and then the path meanders through the garden. We made some grade changes so that as you come around, you can discover like we have a, an art installation over here as a part of the narrative of the garden. And then we have where it ends up in a seating area had a little turnout around the oak tree. The focus of the garden is the oak tree, is the big oak tree. And then everything else kind of plays off of that. So the buckeye is here because at this time of year, this white bark is silhouetted against the dark of the oak tree when you're looking from the street. Now that's the kind of the, the hook to pull you in, hopefully. And then at some point, you come around the corner and then you see all the wheels here and then you see the housing development. The idea was that stuff was hidden or at least the housing development part was hidden until you got here. We are creating, you know, this folly in the middle of the garden to again start pull you through. And then beyond that, then the question, you know, that's the structure of the garden. Um, then the question became, well, what plants need to go where? And that's determined by what can live in that environment, you know, next to the oak tree, we have some shade in the afternoon um, and what can live in full sun during the day. It looks kind of wild because one of my touchstones always is Japanese gardening and Japanese gardens are native gardens. You know, they're taking the stuff that grows there naturally and they're just manicuring nature. And we're doing the same thing with natives, our natives. We started out this garden as a collector's garden. It was originally oriented around buckwheats and we have uh, a number of relatively rare buckwheats. Ariatum crocatum, I guess we're gonna kind of pat ourselves on the back about because I used it a lot in gardens in the beginning, 10, 15 years ago, when very few people were using it. And now you see it everywhere. And it's like, I don't know, did we do that? I don't know, but we helped. Some people collect records, spoons. <laughs> we collect native plants. We're standing in front of Camibatia australis, and it's a relatively rare plant. You don't see it in even native gardens very often. And for us, because we're art nerds, we're always looking for something that's, you know, got some cool character to it. Some of the things you see here, you won't see in even other native gardens very often. Many people uh, say to us uh, that come from different parts of the United States that California doesn't really have seasons. <laughs> and living with this garden for 18 years, we've really noticed the seasons that people that come to the tour see our garden in the springtime and it's very lush and full of color with the seasonal wildflowers. And now it's much more open. But if you look closely on the ground right now, we have all kinds of life popping up through the soil. And so if you come back in the spring, then you'll see what it has transformed into. Mm -hmm. 